Hey, Viola, you're giving me a headache and I'm about to take some acetaminophen. Is there anything I have to worry about? We are like every other woman in my life, but we'll find out more on today's Medical History Mystery. Okay, so you're mentioning that there are some dangers associated with taking acetaminophen. Tell me about it. So, you know, acetaminophen has the reputation of being the safe analgesic, and rightfully so, based on all the other information we have on all the other analgesics we use, acetaminophen seems to have the, 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 the safety profile we all desire, because it really doesn't cause many drug interactions, number one, and number two, you can take it in reasonably high doses and not really have any ill effects. So people love it because it doesn't interact with their other meds. It doesn't cause any ramifications with their other systemic illnesses. It's perfect, right? It's sort of like this Teflon approach. Like, you know, it does its job, but it doesn't really stick to anything. Wonderful. But as everyone knows, acetaminophen earned that reputation. And yet we don't really know much about acetaminophen. First thing we don't know is how it even works. Now, I know there are pharmacology experts out there. And I know they always email me and contact me and say, Oh, come on, well, we figured it out by now. But we really haven't. We don't really know how acetaminophen works. We have great theories, but we don't know. So first thing we don't know, how it works. Second thing we don't know, really, how much is too much? The FDA says there's a limit, but that's not really based on much more than just sometimes anecdotal information. So wait a minute, how did a drug for which we don't know how it works and for which we don't know how much is too much how did the drug ever get approved for use in the United States? And the answer is, it was the 60s. And a lot of things happened in the 60s. I was born in the 60s, so right there was a bad decade, okay. <laughs> so is there anybody besides cats that, can, that we have to be cautious of? <laughs> good, good one. So what about acetaminophen? All right, so your patients love acetaminophen. Why? Because they know why. It's good for fever and it's good for pain, right? That's what they know. Oh, what they really know about acetaminophen is what? It's good for fever and it's good for pain in babies and children, pregnant women, and old people. So if it's safe for those three, what we would describe as high risk populations, if it's safe for them, got to be safe for me, Joe or Jane Public. I mean, I don't, I'm not in those high-risk populations, so I could probably take as much Tylenol as I want. And that's the problem, okay? Because we all know that the danger of acetaminophen comes in when you take too much. So how much is too much? <laughs> I took the question right out of your mouth, Pam, right? You how did. much is too much? Well, what happens when you take too much acetaminophen? First of all, let's figure out why there's an issue. Okay. So this is going to be pharmacologic. If you want to turn your brain off in the next 10 seconds, that's fine. Okay. Acetaminophen is processed in your liver, two pathways, glucuronidase and sulfonase. Those pathways are very efficient and acetaminophen gets cleared relatively quickly. Okay. But those two pathways are open to saturation, meaning if you take too much, not all of the acetaminophen can go out those pathways. Okay, so what happens to the excess, the leftover acetaminophen that didn't make it out? Well, that gets acted upon by liver enzymes. And the irony of all ironies is that the liver enzymes attack the acetaminophen and turn it into something that's toxic to the liver itself. So- What does it turn it into? Well, that's the thing. So it turns it into this metabolite that actively destroys liver tissue. Now, okay. How do I survive this? Wait a minute, well, I've taken my doses of Tylenol throughout my life. I, I didn't get liver toxicity. Okay, first of all, it depends on what you take. So the FDA says the maximum daily dose of acetaminophen is 4,000 milligrams in 24 hours. That's the max, okay? And they, and they say, basically, if you go beyond that, you're running the risk of liver toxicity. Now, I know plenty of people who come to me and said, guess what, Viola? I took 5,000, I took 6,000 milligrams of acetaminophen. I'm just fine. I know. That's because we all have a little bit of a product called glutathione. 
in our liver. Now, you can't take it as a supplement. It doesn't work. You can't get it as an injection. But glutathione that's in your liver detoxifies or deactivates that toxic metabolite. But no one knows how much you have. And no one knows how quickly you're going to use it up. Such an idiosyncratic, such a per individual basis that the FDA can't say, for you, it's 5,000, and for you, it's 6,000. Or for you, it's 4,000. So the FDA comes in at 4,000. And the waters get murky from there. Because the manufacturer of Tylenol, the major manufacturer of acetaminophen in this country, says it's 3,000 milligrams. And why would that be? CYA. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> so, you know, FDA says 4,000. Manufacturer of Tylenol says 3,000. Why? Why the 1,000 milligram discrepancy? Because the manufacturers of Tylenol know what? You're probably going to take other forms of acetaminophen in that 24 hours. Probably products that they make with the name Tylenol on them. Like what? Tylenol PM, Tylenol cold and sinus. And all of a sudden, you've got more acetaminophen. And maybe if you'd started at, let's say, the 4,000 milligram and took those other products, now you can run into toxicity. So the manufacturer of Tylenol suggests this 1,000 milligram buffer to make up for the fact that you might be taking other forms of acetaminophen. I would also assume that the three to 4,000 milligram limit is really for those who are generally healthy. There's obviously people out there that have um, different maladies associated with their liver and perhaps it's contraindicated or maybe that upper limit should not be that high. Agreed. Now, again, I couldn't have said it better. And that's for your average Jane Joe public, okay? Who, who you know, doesn't have any existing pre-existing liver conditions, doesn't have any really health, any health history or issues to go with. They're just basically ASA one, okay? But what about the patients with pre-existing liver disease or pre-existing health conditions? Okay, so you drink a lot of alcohol, okay? You smoke tobacco cigarettes, not vaping, not cannabis. You smoke tobacco cigarettes, okay? Uh, you take a drug like Dilantin. Those three different ideas I just gave you all have one thing in common. They all speed up the liver. And so that means you make more toxic stuff. So a lot of people think, well, I can't take 10,000 milligrams of acetaminophen like I want to. All right, I'll take 4,000, the absolute max. And I'll take it every day. But those other things can confound that number, right? So if you smoke, drink alcohol, there goes the weekend, okay? If you, uh, if you take Dilantin, all of a sudden now the 4,000 milligram dose that you thought was safe isn't safe for you. So you can get liver toxicity from acetaminophen in two ways. Take a massive dose all at once or take what you think is the maximum dose, but take it every day and have other confounding factors that, that participate in making it dangerous. So it seems to me that the overlying theme when it comes to over-the-counter medications is yes, they are called over-the-counter because we can get them over-the-counter. However, it's still a medication. There are still contraindications and different ways we should be cautious and really be judicious when we're going to use these medications. Couldn't have said it better because your patient is not a good self-reporter. And I'll leave you with this thought. You know, let's say you did take 10,000 milligrams of acetaminophen, right? I'm going to take 10,000 milligrams. Okay, so guess what happens tomorrow morning or tomorrow night, 24 hours later? Nothing. You feel fine. So you say, dodge that bullet, I'm good, right? That's because the toxic effect doesn't really happen for about four days. So four days later, now you're starting to feel the abdominal pain and the, you know, the distension, the discomfort, your urine's really dark, you look a little yellow around the gills. And so it's like, I don't feel well. That's because now you're getting the toxic effects of that Tylenol you took four days ago. But do you think the average layperson attributes the symptoms they have today to a dose of a drug they took four days ago, especially if they believe that drug is safe? You know what might happen? After taking the first 10,000 milligram dose and feeling like they might do it again and again and again. And that's what sets themselves up for potential liver failure with acetaminophen. Now, 
Ask anyone who knows this and they'll tell you there was an antidote, but it's hardly ever used. Why? Because by the time you know you've had excess Tylenol in your liver and caused toxicity, you already have the damage. It's kind of late to take the antidote at that point. So my words to, to my fellow uh, practitioners is if you know someone, family member, a patient who admits to taking too much acetaminophen at once, get them to the hospital as quickly as possible. It's handled as an, out, handled as an outpatient. And, and you can get the antidote and save your liver. It's that easy. Well, thank you for that. What's the name of the antidote? So it's called N-acetylcysteine, uh, but it comes by various names. At, at this point, it can be either administered by uh, inhalation, which is kind of old school. Uh, now they have effervescent tablets that you can use to, to deactivate that uh, nasty stuff that Tylenol is converted into. Uh, and it works pretty well. Uh, it's outpatient. Like I said, you go to the hospital, you go to the ER, they give the patients, uh, they give the patients the tablets they have to take on a schedule by which you take them and you're good to go. Awesome. Well, once again, we have to be really care careful about what we're administering in our practice, but also if we know our patients are taking this on a regular basis, there's definitely some things to keep in mind. So thank you for unlocking that ministry for me. And I look forward to the next one. Thanks so much, ma'am. Always a pleasure. Take care. Bye everyone. Thank you.